It's another beautiful Saturday in the month of November and it's my pleasure to welcome you to another edition of Editors Forum. I am Rita Omodia and of course on this program we get to discuss issues from burners affecting the country and this week was packed with quite a lot of stories and of course on the program today we have lots of issues to discuss for you. As usual I'm not alone on today's edition of the program. I have Bjordan Shomi on the show. Thank you for joining us. I'm pleased to be here. And of course Achike Chudi. I'll call him an August visitor but thank you very much for joining us on the show. How can a man be an August visitor? <laughs> in his own house. In his own no, no, in November. In November. In November. <laughs> thank you. Well, no <laughs> it's a pleasure. All right, and of course, Dr. Dio Kaude, thank you for joining us on the show. Yeah, pleasure being here, but where have you been? I have been <laughs> to, the sea, to, the sea, world, the queen. to see the queen, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to be back, and of course, bringing back um, good tidings for you all. So now let's kick start today's business. Yes, lots of things were trending on the social media, and of course, on uh, the news airspace as President Muhammad Buhari on Tuesday received some criticisms from Nigerians uh, for signing the amended deep offshore and inland basin production sharing bill while he was on a private visit or rather while he's on a private visit to the United Kingdom. Uh, the president had moved out of the country on October 28 in the first leg of the trip to Saudi Arabia while the second leg as a private visit to London started on November 2nd. Uh, he will be away from Nigeria till November the 17th. Now, Buhari signing the Deep Offshore Amendment Bill in London raised questions on whether the Vice President, Yemi Oshimbaju, could not have signed the new law back home in Nigeria. While we have a Vice President in Nigeria, people said, why didn't he just sign the bill and why did President Muhammad Buhari have to sign a bill back in London? But quickly, the presidency said that there was no issue with that. Uh, let's take a look at their reply and when we come back, we'll analyze these issues. All right, we do apologize for that audio glitch. I'm sure we'll have that package later on. But actually, in that package you're about to see, we saw the presidency saying that release a statement um, saying that there was no problem and that President Muhammad Buhari could sign the bill anywhere in whatever position. And uh, a lot of people said that this was relegating the Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo's position. And if we recall, there were a lot of rumors about relegation of the vice president's position, even as we saw that some of the aides of Yemi Oshimbaji were also sacked. But the presidency said it was a general overall of the aides, as some of the president's aides too were also sacked. So, to be or not to be the signing of the bill by President Muhammad Bukhari in London, do you see an issue with that, Biodun? Uh, well, um, I think the critical issue is um, the president uh, when he's out of the country on official visit uh, is still deemed to be on duty all right so the gray area is when the president is on a private visit or is on vacation whether he could um, sign uh, bills particularly if it's not an official uh, tree and the major issue for me is the idea that um, i don't see if it is legal for him to sign while okay. out of the country on a private visit, if he's not on vacation, then uh, the ma main issue is actually about the vice president, you know, leaving the country on a private visit without handing over to the vice president. Vice president. And the fact that the president did not hand over to the vice president presupposes that the vice president could not 
and will not be in a position to sign it and therefore they had to take the bill to him so the critical issue is um, the oversight functions of the senate and uh, whether uh, the, the the private visit of the president is considered as official trip if he's not considered as official trip then um, i don't think he has a right to sign um, the bill because when you go through the constitution i think it only covers when he's out of the country uh, mm -hmm. when he's on official trip and also when he's on vacation he has to transport power you know and that is the issue here so the presidency as far as i view it um, is only playing with um, words what has not been explained is that if the president is on the private vis visit is he supposed to hand over to the oh. vice president so it's not about signing the bill alone if he's supposed to hand over to the vice president and he has not done so of course that is a breach of the constitution and if he signs anything while breaching the constitution something cannot stand on nothing that would be another illegality so the way i view it is the gray area is actually whether when you're on a private visit which is not specifically stated in the constitution but when you're on an official visit you have a right to you know those are the issues here and if he has not handed over to the vice president why is the national assembly not crying foul you know if they think something is wrong with that Okay, thank you for um, bringing up the issue of transmission of powers. And um, the House of Representatives said no letter from the President on par transmission to the Vice President. When contacted on Tuesday, the Chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Media and Publicity, Benjamin Kalu, stated that the Speaker, Febik Bajabiamila, would have read any letter from Buhari at the opening of the day's plenary if there was any. Achike. Yeah, well, I'm happy that you provided the context, you know, when you were making reference to, to the documents being taken to the president abroad for his signature. And the context you provided was the increasing rumor of uh, the president or the vice president being uh, sidelined yes, and uh, backed up by the fact that uh, members of, uh, I mean, some of his aides were also sacked, though you also... Uh, uh, said that uh, the presidency had indicated that even the president's own uh, aid, uh, aid were also sacked in the process. But we'll go back to that. <coughs> now, the, it's not a, a very usual thing for presidents to leave the country for weeks. We're not talking of days. You mm -hmm. visit one or two countries in two, three days, you're back. Mm -hmm. But this is a matter of weeks that the president is going to be out. So whether he's on a private visit, even if it's an official visit, I think the duration of the president's absence from the country is also critical. Okay. And uh, like I said, there are not so many presidents all over the world, especially in serious countries, that will leave their country and spend weeks outside continuously. Of course, we don't know the essence of his private visit. People are speculating it is calculated and all that. But then again, the question, because if there is always the news behind the news, the question you ask yourself is, before this election, would the president have done the same thing? You know, do not also forget that this issue had been resolved at a time, I think the first year of the president's, of his presidency. Okay. When the issue came up, I think there was a time he traveled and then did not, you know, transmit a letter uh, to uh, the National Assembly, uh, handing over to the vice president. It became an issue. The very next time he traveled, it was resolved because that letter was done. Even though people were asked, quarreling about the message mm. of the weddings of that, uh, you know, um, handover, mm. but he handed over. You, you know, now that means that would tell that they know what to do. They know they have already established a precedence which the law recommends, but they have not done it this this time around. Why have they not done it this time around? Is it that the vice president is not capable of signing, or he wouldn't even understand what he's going to sign, mm. or is it the fear that perhaps something could happen within the polity, and the vice president, because he's now in charge for the period that the president is away, will have to take responsibility? And they are not sure exactly what kind of decision he will take. Do not forget that for most of the time that the president was out of this country, the vice president held forth. And I think there was a general consensus that he did very well. Then we had a lot of crisis and tension in the country. But he traveled to some of the hot spots, mm -hmm. you know, the southeast, the Niger Delta region, and so on, and spoke suiting words yeah. that seemed to calm down the polity. So perhaps there are some people within the administration that did not like that. I don't know. I'm only speculating. Because you want to ask yourself, where is this thing, you know, or coming, coming from? from yeah. You know, and so then, of course, there was the issue of the DSS director then, 
Director General, the DSS, who was removed after that invasion on the National Assembly Same because day. it was a very serious issue. Now, we also told that the Vice President was the one that initiated the process of removing him and that some people were not happy that that had happened. By the time the President came back, they, they, they wanted to reverse it. These are the stories. But could not because it would have been a very big embarrassment uh, to the government if that had happened. Now, you know, so this is, I, I believe, clearly the issue. Would it have happened? I don't think before the election it would, have, it would have been allowed to happen because that would have created some tension. At this particular point in time, the vice president is not needed so much anymore. You know, because you, you're not going to see a situation where the president will submit himself again before the Nigerian people. Mm -hmm. And so all of these other things that are now coming, that are now in between, could be part of the intrigues of 2023. Mm. And then the issue of the sack of uh, the AIDS, AIDS. of uh, the vice president, which you also brought in into the mix, uh, you have to look at the fact, fine, if they say it also affected the presidency, there's no, absolutely no problem with that. And again, the issue of powers. The president has the powers to sack anybody, to sack the aides of the vice president. But when a smooth working relationship has been established between the president and the vice president, courtesy demands that when you feel that he has a bloated you know, uh, staff yeah. and that you need to also cut down, I think it is respectful you know, for you to get in touch with the vice president and inform the vice president of what is about good. what you want to do all right yeah, he does not have the power to stop you you understand but if the vice president was not informed about it then i would say to a very large extent that it is part of the attempt to whittle down the influence of the vice president for whatever reason okay can we see it as whittling the powers of the vice president or lack of communication between two of them it's not communication for goodness sake they are in the same place they they are if even if they are not in the same place it's a phone call after all people who are saying that the president can govern this country from abroad, from any part of the world. Mm -hmm. How are they going to do that? They are looking at technology, they are looking at communications and all of those things because the world is a global village. They are not talking about people who, uh, who work within the same environment. No, it's not, uh, it's, it's mischief somewhere. All right. For whatever reason. Okay, you're a sensing mischief. Um, Dr. Dyer, what are you seeing from all this? You see, in my own uh, reaction, I'm not going to miss words. Okay. I'm going to say it straight. Way it is. As it is. Yeah. And uh, I will also be looking at it from the perspective of the Constitution that is okay. guiding us. I'm not a lawyer, though, but at least I can say some things from the Constitution. Now, let us go back to Yaradua's regime. When he traveled out and did not, he failed to transmute powers to. Good Lord Jonathan, who was the vice president then. It was this crop of people in APC that were talking there, that were leading the agitation, both in the civil society and in the National Assembly. To the extent that they now amended the law then. Even through, it went through all the states' uh, houses of assembly. Whereby they now said, when the president has traveled out of the country without transmitting power to the vice, the, the National Assembly has the prerogative to transmit that power to the, pre, uh, to vice, the vice president president's. automatically. After 21 days. After, I, said, I said, after 21 days. But what was mentioned there was the president can travel out on medical. All right? Okay. On vacation. Mm -hmm. Okay? And on, uh, on medica, on vacation, and on private visits. I mean, and on uh, official visits. visits. Okay. Like where you say you want to go and meet one president or something. But that word private, private. was not mentioned. mentioned. Okay. Are you with me? Private was not mentioned. So, on what basis are you now bringing in that word private? trip to nigerians because we voted you in and you are accountable to us that is why two if private is not mentioned or was not mentioned in that constitution on what basis will you travel out of the country without transmuting power to the vice president bearing in mind that you are just coming in 
saying there's going to be a law that is going to redirect powers of Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation, mm -hmm. whereby limiting the way, the extent to which people can discuss issues in terms of hate speech. My brother was using something now, speculation. They are now making my brother here now to speculate. My brother, you better be careful of your speculation. Speculations and all that. So, to the very large extent, Rita, who is now breeding rumor, speculations, and hate speeches here now? Because people are now saying there is no good relationship between the president and his vice. And your body language, your activities, your utterances, your actions, everything about you is spinning it out that yes, there is no true relationship. I will show you this. You travel did not transmit power. And somebody now decided to bring a particular bill that is not of emergency, I mean, that has nothing like emergency in it, to London to come and sign. And you are now beaming it to the whole world. You, you cannot do that in secrecy. secrecy. Look at it. Our electoral law that is there, you never sign it. Now, even now, taking this thing out, let me tell you, sir. Taking a bill outside the shores of this country to go and sign in UK as number one on the mind, number two denigrates, number three has subjugated mm. our integrity, our sovereign integrity. Because they are now telling me that whatever you want to do, you can stay in UK and be doing it because Nigeria is not too important to you. So where do we go from there? Now, let's, let's even push that one aside again. If you say you are traveling out of the country on private vi visits, for goodness sake, the other time you had your, your medical, medical tourism in that UK, how, are you now, how do you now want to tell me that you have not gone for medicals again? Because you did not, you did not, you did not say it explicitly what you have gone there to do. Is it to go and assist them in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, removing that in Broglo that Brexit has caused in the UK? Or you are now part of the parliament that will now, that will now work on the election that is coming up in the UK in, uh, in December? Or we, what kind of private visit? We want to know. And then look at what is now happening in presidency. Some people who try as much as possible now in court, like he was speculating, Whittling down the powers of the, of, of the vice president. My king, something happened the other time when, when power was transmitted to this guy. Foreign exchange dropped. Incidences of, uh, uh, what do I call it now? Fulani S men okay. dropped. He went to Southeast, that government cannot travel to before. South South, he went to all those areas to talk to them, and they all held him. There was also a rumor the whole time which, he, which the vice president also dispensed and said that he was trying to come up with his own structure to mm -hmm. become the next president. Do you understand? And people are even saying that he's so called now a quote godfather because of his own, also in quote, uh, ambition in 2023, is now supporting Buhari for, I mean, against uh, Oshimaju so that he can have. Do you understand? Your activities are breathing what you are now calling it speech and all this and all that. Mr. President, can we change this body language? Hmm. Can we change this body language so that we don't just be fighting each other unnecessarily? All right, Dr. Dyer has raised a very big question here and brought lots of points out there. Can we change the body language? Okay, that's from Dr. Dyer. Uh, well, we'll see how that situation pans out. But talking about budget, now let's not forget that the Lagos State Governor, uh, Songo Babajide Songo Lu, signed, or rather, uh, presented the budget to the State Assembly of 1.168 trillion 2018 budget. Um, his counterpart to Ekiti State. Governor Kyle Defiami also presented his own budget to the Assembly. And rightfully, Dr. Dayo hinted at our next topic, which is the Social Media Regulation Bill. Uh, the Senate introduced the bill on social media regulation and it prescribed about 10 million naira, 5 million naira, and 150,000 naira 
fines or jail terms for offenders. Uh, according to the story, a few days after the Minister of Information announced plans by the federal government to regulate social media usage, the Nigerian Senate has begun working on the legislation to this effect. When passed in the Senate to a 150,000 naira fine or a three month jail term awaits anyone found guilty of posting false information on the social media platforms. In other words, if you post a fake news or a false information, you'll be fined 150,000 naira. In addition, a penalty of between 5 million naira and 10 million naira is being prescribed for any corporate organization that fails to block false information after being cautioned by the regulatory agency. The bill, which is scaled first reading at plenary, is entitled Protection from Internet Falsehood and Manipulations Bill 2019, and it was sponsored by Senator Mohammed Sani Musa. Sorry. Okay, so we have it there, um, the Social Media Regulation Bill. Let us recollect that this is not the first time it's been presented. In 2015 it was, and it was withdrawn in 2016. Now, talking about social media, we know that social media has had its advantages and disadvantages, and one for us journalists and broadcasters has been the issue of um, fake news. Even during the elections, we can attest that there were some news that were circulating around that were not necessarily true. Uh, at least talking about 2019, for example, you can see some videos in 2015 and they will posit as something that happened in 2019. And with that, um, uh, there have been calls for social media regulation, but some civil society groups have lamented that the proposed bill be passed into law. It will set back all the progress Nigeria has made in its fight for the protection of human rights, especially the freedom of expression. Biotin show me social media regulation bill. At least I can recall, I think when I was watching the news, I saw um, Facebook and CEO, that's Mark Zuckerberg, uh, was facing a panel concerning um, regulation of um, 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 parties and um, uh, campaigns on social media there. So we can see that it's somehow going universal. But what's your own take in Nigeria here? Well, I think it's laughable. Okay. Because you only need to look at how would you implement it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, most of those websites yes. yeah. were actually, are actually hosted outside the church of Nigeria. Mm. In many cases, the person paying for the website, you right. paid somebody to host a website for you, and that's the end. You know, and he has paid to a foreign um, company you know, outside the jurisdiction of Nigeria. The person that actually paid may not be the owner. All right. The identity that is used to register the site might not even exist. It could be synonym. It could be companies that are not existing in Nigeria. Now, let me give you a very good example. Sahari Reporters okay. is based in US. How do you find Sahari Reporters for crimes, for things which you allege crimes, which are not crimes in America, but which you consider to be crime here? In order to enforce it, you will need to get the court, uh, the, the court decision. Eh? A uh, fine of fine. three or ten million naira, whatever amount, registered in US. In US, they will argue that it's not an offense to express yourself through the social media in the US. So we are walking into a very, very difficult path. I want, I think the minister needs to go and look at Naira Land. Mm -hmm. Most of the names on Naira Land are pseudonyms. Mm -hmm. yeah. So who are you going to take to court? I also remembered about two, two and a half years ago or two years ago, a young man in Ogo State was actually, you know, taken to court by the state government for publishing, you know, false stories. He went to court eventually, the case was neither here nor there, the government dropped, you know, the, 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 the case. The next thing the young man did, he had to change to pseudonym, mm. and he now became more menacing. Everybody knew is the one, but you <laughs> cannot prove it. prove it. So, the problem is, we are walking into a mine area, a very, very difficult area. I'll tell you what the government is trying to do. Because they've been able to regulate um, the, the broadcast industry, industry yeah. uh, through uh, NBC, uh, government felt that the press council is regulating the newspapers. They could not even you know, withstand the idea that there could be another platform where people can express themselves. While you have fake information, you know, on, in, in social media, you also have good information. Mission, yes. In fact, the best library in the old world, the most keep library in the old world now, is the social media. So, how are you going to tackle that? The issue is not what the government needs to do. 
you cannot violate people's freedom of speech and expression because that would also be uh, subject to challenge. Mm -hmm. Do not forget, we have signed so many international treaties where we guarantee that. Uh, that right to Nigerians, including the UN Charter, including the African People's Ch Charter, African People's Charter, uh, all right, or something. We have signed all that. So when you begin to try and undermine it, thinking that you are trying to regulate the industry in order to achieve your own goal of actually pumping out your own information, at the end of the day, what will happen is people will resort to other forms, you know, uh, other ways of escaping. In the, the, the intended uh, action of the action. government, which is to arrest people, arrange them in court, get them fined, or get them sent to jail for expressing themselves. Whether you agree with the information or not, what you need to do is to put out your own information. If you don't want to do that, you simply go to court and sue for libel. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the law provides for whatever they want to do now. If anybody publishes anything false, you can take the person to court, court. you yeah. know, and then uh, get a, a redress. So there's no need for trying to muzzle the social media the way the government is trying to do it now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, a lot of people would say that uh, social media, um, the advantages have actually outweighed um, the disadvantages. As, we, as he rightly said, news has been able to go around due to social media. So now for the bill at Chike today, yay or nay, as they would say. I think it was one of the popes, I, don't, I can't remember which of the popes exactly, that said that uh, when a government loses the goodwill of the people and uh, uh, begins to fail in its ability, Okay. and to properly govern it results to shameful abuse and i think that this is what we are beginning to see um and you must also because you see there is the underlying there are the underlying elements mm. that are going on in the country for instance he just talked about the uh the government now using the mbc to kind of muzzle the media and of course you know that there have been complaints about what the government has been trying to do with the media. Now, what we have in the country now uh, is decentralization or the regulation of dictatorship. And what I mean is this. It used to be the uh, primary responsibility or fault of the government you know, to respond uh, to maybe uh, get uh, some media people when they are not happy that they try to close down a media house or get you know mm. some journalists arrested mm. yeah that is what they have i mean they used mm. to do especially under the military dictatorship now we have an issue where you know a case where from what we have been saying in the country today that has been decentralized state governors now cannot get up and arrest people who write things that they are not comfortable with comfortable, yeah. uh, you know so they are getting a cue from the center then beyond that again, and, and you just see some of the things we are seeing today. I remember somebody reminded us uh, recently that under a military dictatorship, where you had the outstar clauses, you cannot question edits, military edits, you cannot question military de decrees mm -hmm. and all of that. Sometimes matters get to the court, and the military government makes it very clear that this is beyond your jurisdiction. Yeah. But we had lawyers, we had judges. We had some few judges. Is it Humpon Wusu? Pat Acholonu and so on. We were reminded, that the guy, person reminded us, you know, recently that at a time when Ghanifa and Me's passport, the passport was seized by the DSS. The person, mm -hmm. when he went to court and the military came in there, they made all their arguments and the rest, and the judge said, no, you are violating the rights of uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, these rights are constitutionally guaranteed. So you cannot, you know, come and tell us that the, the, military, the decree says this and that. You know, and then, and, and that Nigeria is a signatory to international conventions and treaties, mm. which supersede sometimes domestic law, and and other than that the passport be released, not just once. We've had other instances with the military governments. Mm -hmm. You release this person, and they go ahead. They don't like it, but they go ahead to, to, to release. But we mm. have a civilian government under a so-called democracy that is refusing to obey, validly given. You know, orders of the court, even to the level of the Supreme Court, that gives you an idea. So this is the context I'm trying to provide in this, you know, to, in order to give an answer to the question, you know, you asked. Now we have a situation where the government also has gone out of its way to regulate NGOs in the country, mm -hmm. so that you see a pattern, and it is that pattern that gives you an idea of what is going on. First of all, you have a government that said so much about the rule of law before this go the government came to power through the uh, Minister of Information then. 
berated the previous government about every attempt to muzzle freedom of, of speech, freedom of the press, you know, at all times. And then, and then you now had a situation where they now come into power, and virtually every single thing for which they held the other government responsible, you now see these things happening. And even going beyond what we are seeing, mm. this issue, for instance, the NGO mm. regulatory bill, has failed. Mm. And, and what even makes it worse was that it was under a military dictatorship, a butcher, mm. that the thing first, that it first came up. Uh, you know, and the, the plan was that they said we don't know where these NGOs are getting their money from, and so on. Of course, you know, at that particular time, the government was facing a lot of hostility at home because it had lost every legitimacy. Even though, even even the fact that it's a, a civilian military dictatorship means that it should not have legitimacy. But sometimes the silence or acquiescence of the people confines them with legitimacy. But it had lost all legitimacy both at home and abroad. And so now wanted to muzzle the civil society space, which was very, very active against their government. Mm -hmm. But that failed. Under the civilian government, the, uh, was it the PDP government or so, I think they mm. tried to bring it up. Yeah. Yes. That also failed. failed yeah. mm. You understand? Now they have decided to bring it up once more. So when you, when you look at that, look at what is happening with the conventional media and then what they are trying to do with social media, uh, you know, you realize that there is a pattern that is worrisome. Mm -hmm. And what is also said, Biondo said, is also critical. <laughs> you know, how are you going to do that? Do it. It's what about, so how are you going to, or obviously they know the limitations. But then it's not about the limitation. There is a target. There are people that are targeted. Mm. Mm. Uh, you understand? Yeah. There is a kind of uh, a, a response they do not want to see on social media. And unfortunately, and that is the hypocrisy in the whole thing. They benefited from this kind of social, social media, media activism. Media in order to come to, go to power. They had people who were doing things the other side is now doing. They're accusing the other side of doing. They had people that they were paying, you know, to sing their songs, to trumpet their, their, their propaganda, propaganda and so on. But obviously because they have lost, you know, uh, to, some, to some extent, the goodwill of the Nigerian people. Most, they, 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 uh, exactly. Now, now they are now trying to muzzle the people. But it is dangerous. Because you see, just like you also say, God also say, by the time you try to put strictures, you try to muzzle people here and there and there, and you do not give them a breathing space to ventilate their anger or their annoyance, then you are creating a completely dangerous scenario where people will look for other means. In most cases, uh, other means that are not in conformity with our values as a people, and they're not in conformity with the laws of this country to be able to have the expression to, to make, express themselves and that would be create, very dangerous for this country so i think they are going on the wrong path this advice whoever gave them that advice is absolutely misinformed and i think must be resisted by nigerians with the every last breath that they have okay. Peter, just before uh, i just remember something All have right. they ever done an in economic impact assessment on nigerian web hosting companies we are going to simply destroy every one of them. There is nobody who will host, you know, uh, in a Nigerian company anymore. Yeah. Because you can easily be, ju you just host, just from your mobile phone or laptop, you pay to foreign companies. What about the impact on our own economy, economy. the foreign exchange, and the destruction yeah. of those web hosting companies that are Nigerians? Mm. Because they won't get the market. Have they done any economic impact assessment? Mm. Okay, Dario. <sighs> yeah, you see, let me start by saying this. With all intents and purposes, this regulation is will definitely make our democracy to tend towards a, 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 a gestapolic decision or scenario where Nigeria is not in a state of gestapo. All right, we are in a democratic situation whereby everybody is free, free yeah. to say whatever he wants to say and to a very large extent the authors of our of our constitution had deemed fit on the in the first onset but look there are people that might want to say things that are derogatory there are people that might want to say things to destroy some other people let us guide against such and it's in our constitution already that's one two when we were constituting leadership of the National Assembly, the other time, I was among those saying, hey, look, the executive that are trying to have a hand 
in the structure of our National Assembly is not going to is not going to augur well for our democracy. Mm. In Yoruba, they will say Ajekila no Mokuleni, Tanomok Ajetokila no Lopo Monje. That is to say, the wish cried today, blood alarm today. The small child died the following day. Who oh, there wouldn't know that the we that cried yesterday is the one that killed that small child? Like Mohammed came out to say this the following week, National Assembly picked it up. And the media, they, they, they said that bill has even passed the first, first reading. reading yeah. do, do you understand? Do we, do we really need that now? But let me tell you what uh, Olobuluwa said. I will just read just one paragraph of it. Okay. Olobuluwa said, it is improper to seek, to control, or supervise those who are to hold you accountable. Mm. Because if you are, if you are, if you are trying to suppress them, how will they hold you accountable? accountable. I will come to that too. And it is illegal, unconstitutional, and ultra-virus for the executive arm of government to seek to take over the statutory function of the court. Mm. Because it is only the court that can decide whether Such. this is this or that. Now let me now tell you about the Greek, the Greek leader. His aides were always telling him, yes, everybody loves you. Everybody loves you, don't worry. But meanwhile, the people are suffering. And then the mother of the leader now said, oh boy, come. You are my son. I want us to go to the market together and see what is happening. Come and see how people that they said are in love with that king started pelleting him with pure water. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that means the aides that were with him had been telling him lies. Perhaps that is what is happening to our leader. I want to implore our president to he himself come out and listen to the pulse of the people so that he will not, he will not soil his, in quotes now, his uh, name. Hmm. Lastly, there is no way we will allow the executive or the judiciary to take the functions of the, I mean, or, or legislature yes, to take the functions of the judiciary. Because there is what we call separation yeah, of powers right. in our constitution. So why can't we just look at it and then let it flow? No way. We have to follow our constitution because we are not in a gesture, rather a democratic set. Let me just add briefly. There was okay, something um, uh, Barrister Femi Falano said at a gathering not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, the same situation. The government uh, brought took some people to court, mm. you know, for saying all kinds of damaging things, uh, disparaging the government and abusing government leaders. Then, and the judge, it's not a very recent decision, and the judge said, well, the people have a right to express themselves. The people have a right to express their displeasure about how they are being governed. That if you do not like what the people are saying, then you should block your ears, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you understand, to prevent yourself from hearing the abuses. Or do the right thing so that because they won't abuse you. it is fundamental you. to the governance of the country that the people express themselves, themselves when they are happy and when they are unhappy. All right, thank you very much there at Chike Chude. And uh, a, a lot of things have been said on this social media regulation bill. Well, we'll see how far that bill goes. Will it happen like 2015 and be withdrawn or will it continue to pass the second reading. Now, away from that, um, the Minister of Works, uh, Babatunde Fashola, uh, made uh, the social media go quite a gog, uh, talking about social media, and there were lots of reports around the comments or reactions to something he said of which affects each and every one of us, and that is the fact that he said that uh, Nigerian roads are not as bad uh, as being projected and lots of people really commented on it and later on um, he says that the failed roads are not peculiar to nigeria and addressing journalists after wednesday's federal executive council meeting the minister attributed the inability to complete road project across across the country to weather conditions that hindered progress on the works and i'm sure all of us <laughs> we pass through road like that's one of the means of transportation mm. yeah would you agree to what the minister said that Nigerian roads 
are not as bad as being projected. I will agree. You agree? Yes. Okay. Or just on one note. Okay. Let him pick his car. All right. Not with a, 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 a helicopter now. And travel from that Abuja. Let him pass through uh, Lokoja to Kogi to Ikiti. All right. Then to Oyo and down to Lagos. Then at the end of that trip, let him come and say it again. Okay. <laughs> the let him <laughs> come and say it again. Well, when I first read the report of yeah. what he was alleged to have said, I didn't believe it. I thought maybe it was just one of those things. So I was waiting to see whether there would be a retraction. Okay. No retraction no. From, it, from the minister. Then I said, okay, maybe I should give it some few more days. Mm -hmm. whether there will be a kind of reflective correction which is done in the form of either saying it was uh, not the, I was misquoted yeah. or the report was inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Again, nothing. I then said, okay, I don't have a choice but to actually accept the fact that if you live in Abuja city and you fly with presidential jets and you use helicopters, there is no way you know the state of road. Uh, you only need to go between Wari and Sapele yeah, mm. and go and check to the Batani. roads. You would see the hell people are going through. Going through. If you go through um, Akure mm. to Owo, mm. hmm. pitiable. From Owo to Akoto, another disaster. Landed. You have yeah. mentioned the kitty now. Yeah. Then again, try and travel between Ife Junction, even from Elisha, Ife mm. Junction mm. to Ibadan, mm. you will see what the roads look like. Go to Ore, mm -hmm. Ore to Shagamu, terrible. You know, when you again look at that, Shagamu go inside the city and look at all the federal roads. A trip from Abu Liegba to Songo is a hell. If you now try to go from, uh, come from Abu mm -hmm. you know, down to Songo water, mm -hmm. it's three hours, mm -hmm. a distance of mm -hmm. Ideally, about 40 minutes but, drive. Yeah. It's three hours. Some people, if it rains, it's five hours. Mm -hmm. So how do you convince people about that? Now, take the international route. Take um, uh, my two, my two mm -hmm. to yeah. Badagri. Mm -hmm. Look, you would dare not go on that road again. Mm -hmm. Now, go from Aton Ota to Agbara is a hell. They need to talk to the people living in the, that area. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go on the other international route, which is some water, to Idi Roko. Mm. Once you get mm. through to Aton, mm. you begin to see the failed roads. When mm. you get to Wode, mm. people can no longer go through the road opposite Zenith. Yeah. Don't yeah. forget it's a federal road, it's an international yeah, road. When you train, opposite yeah. that Exactly. They now via off through some other yeah. compounds, Shot, houses, yeah. you yeah. know, to connect back to the road. Yeah. So uh, in reality, I, I think um, when if you live in Abuja, there's no way you know. Uh, there are bad roads in Nigeria, particularly if you're using presidential jet and you're flying in helicopter. But sir, sorry sir, no, that is like living in Abuja, if you are a responsive mm. people's leader, mm. you will have known. Because mm. even you that is not going there, your, mm. your aides will have been going, going there, there and they will mm. have been telling you. Mm. Even you yourself, I was, I was listening to one particular program, another television, one morning like that, one popular program. And they invited him, he didn't come, he was, they were now making phone calls. And they were telling him straight, straight to his face. I listened to that program early in the morning. Mm. You listen to it, and they were calling. He was, he, was, he was talking to them on phone. And they were, they were telling him all these routes. Okay, now, now um, I, I think it is good that Biodo has traveled all over the country. Because he mentioned I was here. Yeah, he I was only limiting myself. Let's just, say, let's just say that he's going to maybe about 35% uh, of uh, Nigeria. Nigeria, okay. From what he, the places he mentioned. You look at even from uh, Ogumosho towards Ilori, from Ilori towards Niger. You know, somebody was complaining in Abuja the other time about Bida, that it was quite a mistake when he mm. came through that place, wanted to go by road. Talk of Abuja Kaduna. Then you talk of uh, you know Onicha to Enugu, Enugu to Port Harcourt, then Port Harcourt to Aba, hmm. East West Road. So what does that tell you? That the entire country is in crisis when it comes to the road, infra road infrastructure. Yeah. There is complete breakdown, complete degeneration. And then again, you want to look at the person who made that statement. This is somebody that has been seen, has been given this toga of somebody who has been a performer. And people will tell you he performed so much in Lagos. There are a few people who have a different idea, but there is a general perception of him as being a performer. 
when he was given two very strong ministries, Ministry of Work and Power, these are the biggest, yeah. uh, some of the most important mm. in the country. People said, yeah, they said it was a, super, it was a super minister. That was because these are super ministries mm. and, and all of that. So it was based on, on, this, on the profile that he brought into this government. That was why he was given those things and people expected him to succeed. Now, I think over time, Fashola has become the, national, the normal Nigerian politician. <laughs> he speaks, you know, the way they speak, does the things that the kind of things that they that they do, and all of. So what I mean is this: this is not the first time he's making this kind of after just statement. Yeah. At a time when the power situation in the country became very difficult, you know, and people were very very upset with what was going on. Yeah. He said openly that Nigerians that the federal government does not have responsibility for power supply in the country. Mm -hmm. That Nigerians mm -hmm. should hold the discourse responsible. responsible mm -hmm. yes. And I I've never seen, this. I've never heard this kind of outlandish statement from any minister of state. Power, national economy, progress and welfare of the country. He says it's not forget, hold the discourse responsible. Then he now comes and makes this kind of statement. We can only assume, really, that he's talking on the basis of the knowledge that he have, having traveled or through uh, the city, I mean Abuja, its metropolis, and then flown by air, either with presidential jet or helicopter, just like uh, Dr. Dyer said. This can be the only thing. Otherwise, he's making liars of all of us. Mm. If we accept, because it's either the, 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 the minister is right, and then we are wrong. It's either he's saying the truth, and then we are all telling lies, or that we, are saying the truth and he's lying about it okay you know but either way what we know what we see what we experience are not things that anybody can tell us that you know like fella said i know the place where me i they go somebody talks about me the place i know go i don't go i, I go i go what is it mm -hmm. i don't agree i don't agree i don't agree mm -hmm. you understand so we know what we see mm -hmm. what we experience in the country so when a minister comes and tells us that it's not what we see it's not what we know it's not what we experience that he must be the one that is a liar. Okay, the, the issue now, you know, when he was questioned uh, at the FEC, he said that the reason why we're having incompleted roads is due to the bad weather, or rather due to weather conditions. <laughs> is that excused is anyway? What we're talking of even weather conditions. Is it, is it one single weather condition mm -hmm. that we have a new year? Mm -hmm. For how many years has it, has it been there? Do you understand? Yeah. So when you have every weather condition, sure. what did you do? Okay. The let me let me just mention the one that he himself had seen before, and the way it's supposed to be his base, Lagos, hmm. Lagos State. Yeah, especially at Papa. What has he done? When he was governor, he saw it. He was able he was able to get adequate information about that place. Now you are the federal. Now what have you done? The Badagri, the the Badagri, uh, uh, my two express that we are talking about. You cannot say you don't know about it. What have you done since? Now you are even just one, one single minister, not a super minister again. So why, why mm. should people just mm. spew series of uh, lies to our faces? Do, is it because Nigerians are people that are peaceful? Is it because we Nigerians will love order and then we don't like unnecessary uh, are fighting with the government so they shouldn't just push us to the wall they should just mind what they say they should mind what they do they should mind the way they lie towards us mm. i think we should help the honorable minister to yeah. say what the problem yeah. is yeah. okay yeah the problem is the budget mm. the budget approved for the roads can barely do you know, for the job yeah. What is the performance of that budget? The, what is the of performance the, of that budget? No, no, instead of the minister, that, don't forget they approved 250 something billion for the. It doesn't mean that they will lease 50 percent of it. You might end up getting 40 percent. Now the problem is 
the honorable minister needs to explain this to Nigerians rather than providing, you know, modified. Mm, I will disagree. Is this is performance. Let me say something. Okay. Let, me, let, me, let me add to what he's saying. Mm. You know, there's first there's some truth in that when it says let's help the minister, but we go beyond that. We must go beyond that. We say let us help all of them. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> yes. You, you okay. So that mm. means the minister of education also has issues. Yes. Yes. No. Yeah. 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 And what does that tell you? The country is degenerating every yes. single day. Okay. We cannot turn a country. Yes. When they come up every day, I tell people, when you come up with a budget, budget of what? Uh, Nine trillion naira uh, for 180 million citizens of this country. Uh, you, you understand? You want to generate electricity. You want to. We have a problem. The fundamental issues of governance have not been addressed in this at country. All. You understand? People talk about 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 restructuring people because now okay. you begin to look at how do you even look restructure the oh, entire uh, economy right, of this uh, country. And, yeah, of course, it's cause for debate. It's not here that we can definitely. He uh, talks uh, about the body, but I will just, I'll just leave it low. The little that they have had, we're saying it's not enough. What, just like you said, what have they been able to do with, with this? this? Yeah, that we can see at least, even if that is the point. So, what what, 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 what exactly? Is, at least, let's see Sorry. the little that you've done it. You then we can move forward from there. We can say, okay, this is where I stopped oh, yeah. because the money yes. was not enough. I think that's what most Nigerians would do. So, what I mean, NDC, look at the money they pumped to NDC. That's all. Okay. <laughs> we'll still we'll go back to that. I'm sure uh, Nigerian roads really uh, affect everybody one way or the other. But we cannot but bring the issue of fire ma management to the front burner. Unfortunately, we had about three fire incidents. We had two in Lagos and one in Imo State. We had head of the shopping complex there at Mbalugun Market, which took about two days. The fire was on and was really, really and devastating. Yes, and uh, <laughs> we also had one yesterday, and the Jeba fire to again. We had houses, uh, shops being burned, and there was one question, or rather accusations, that some of the eyewitnesses said. They said, number one, the firefighters didn't come on time, and they were not even well equipped to fight the fire. You see, as an expert in okay. aviation and the safety, I will just run it up in two sentences. What has always been our level of preparedness mm. to disaster? One, two. We are always looking at reaction to disaster. To what extent have we been reducing or running away from having disaster? So instead of even trying to cope this, uh, 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 our, our reaction to disaster, why don't we put in programs that will not allow such a thing to happen? We should always think ahead. Of disaster rather than following okay. disaster. Well, well uh, I like what you said about um, being proactive rather re than reacting, but sometimes there are some things that are not within our power. Hmm. Things happen. Fire, why, fire can happen. So, how well, yes, that's yeah, why I'm that's saying that fire, if preparedness. we can tackle, yeah. okay, to avoid it, but there are some things that are unavoidable. Hmm. Um, Bjorn, do you feel hmm. that? Firefighters, or rather, we are really trained or uh, sensitized to manage fire incidences in Nigeria? You cannot prevent disasters yes emergency natural or oh. due to fluctuation of power or somebody put on a candle and forgot and yes. fire. now the issue is how do you respond to it in southwest today there are only three states in southwest that has functional emergency response you know fire uh, team um, and out of those three apart from the rest which are not non-functional uh, the fire engines are there but they are not moving Hmm. They're not functional. So they are just then, there. They're yes, statutory. yes. Okay. And in, in one instance, you know, at least in one state, I can absolutely uh, say because I told the governor, all the firefighting equipments have no um, the chemicals. You know, hmm. the and, thing that mixed with the it, hydrants. and therefore the hydrants they don't have it. And in one case, in the state capital, the fire engine has not moved in over two years. Not because there were no, no fire incidents, but because they, they just can't do it. They, they didn't have the budget, you know, to fix many of these things. So what you see is that I don't think we are serious as a country in mm. terms of responding to emergencies, in mm. terms of valuing human life and properties. Whereas if you go through the constitution, the primary, the first task yeah. of any government is the protection of lives and properties. properties yeah. We are not seeing the evidence of that. To some extent, Lagos State has a better system, you know, but that is not even ideal, you know, if you look at how emergencies are to be managed. One of the major issues which you face is one, 
the sensitization of the people. People are not aware because yes. they think the firefighters won't have adequate equipment, they won't have enough water. You see everybody trying to, to put out, yes. to put out, and in the process also obstruct the firefighters. Fighters. That is one. The second issue itself, bad roads. To Going access, back again. Oh, so look, we need to look at a lot of things holistically. It's not just about fighting that fire. It's not just about combating that disaster. We are only lucky that we have not had major fire um, incidents. As you know, it's happening now in, uh, in is Australia, not, not, uh, even in North Carolina, yeah, in, in, in in US, we are just lucky that our weather is so good yeah. and God has been so kind to us. Because I don't know how we're going to cope. Okay, talking about bad roads, crowd management. What about the firefighters? Are they well trained? Because even for that incident, we saw that uh, we had to have extra hands to be able to put out the fire. They, they have training school. They have. They they do those they ones in service. Those ones in service are well trained. Okay. But they are highly understaffed. Mm. Did they have personnel to train? No. All right. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, one more that you get today. No, that time. Do you have it? No. I mean, I, I think what encapsulates the whole discussion is what he said. The country Nigeria is a badly run country. Yeah. And these are the consequences. I don't need to talk more. I, I don't. I don't even want to say much about this because. We, we something we are going to see tomorrow until we get the uh, uh, present i mean the political actors the political class in this country mm -hmm. until we are able to make a decision or take a decision about what we need to do to them mm -hmm. then that is the only time we can be mm -hmm. we now know that we can move this, this country forward all right thank you very much well uh, while we are still in this country we can only hope for the best and that things are done quickly because i can imagine a fire happening and nothing has been done to it then mm -hmm. we would all have to suffer to it well that's how we draw the curtains for today's edition the Vices Forum. Thank you very much, Bjorden Shomi, Achike Chude, and Dr. Daya Kayade. And of course, to our beloved audience, thank you for always being a part of Editors Forum. And to all those who made today's show a success, I say a very big thank you. So do join us same time, same station next week. Do not forget the Kogi and Bayal's uh, governorship elections next week. So make sure you're a part of Editors Forum next week, Saturday. I am Rita Omodia. God bless Nigeria.